Well, good evening and welcome to Church of the Ascension. We're so delighted that you are here to celebrate with us. Let's all please stand. And let's take uh, just a moment as we celebrate this great feast of uh, Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ, to uh, just think of an intention that we want to bring uh, to the Eucharist this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we now prepare to celebrate the solemnity of this great feast of the precious body and blood of our Lord, let us call to mind now our sins and ask God's mercy upon us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And now let us give glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us 
a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted by hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna of food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of the wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. He swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His obediences he has not made known to them. Alleluia. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, it is, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. The Lord of Sion. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. See the children's bread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. 
truth, the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac Baum, a victim willing. Paschal lamb, its lifeblood spilling, manna to the fathers sent. Fairy bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesu, of your love, befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Your eternal goodness, send us in the land of life to see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints through lowest, for the heavenly feast you show, fellow heirs and gifts to be, amen, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. I just dropped the microphone, so bear with me. One of them, at least. Today, we celebrate the great feast solemnity of Corpus Christi, known as the Body of Christ. One of my closest friends, who turned 70 next weekend, and who was also a parishioner of mine when I was in Turkey for 15 months, sent a text to me in reply to mine, and I initiated the text by saying, good morning, 
have a great day and give plenty of time for spiritual reading and prayer. I sent the text at about 7 a.m. to him at his residence in Arizona. He and his wife lived there, retired. Within two minutes, he replied, I start the day on my knees. A very spiritual, prayerful Catholic. But that was around 5 o'clock when he replied, 5 a.m. So I tell that story because it says something about the impact of spirituality, Catholic spirituality, prayer, commitment, surrender to the kingdom, and study. And it seems to me that that's what the body of Christ, we say we are one with the body of Christ, calls us to do. But also, we're called to do, we're, we're also called to feel a certain way, to think a certain way. That's Catholic. The heart was not made to harbor hatred, revenge, and so forth. And so as Catholics in one with the body of Christ, there's a certain way that we become. As Augustine says, receive the body of Christ and become that which you already are, end of quote. So how is the body of Christ shaping us into the oneness of Christ who is the head of the church? I recall a statement I've, I've probably shared here in the last two years uh, from a Jewish mindset. Uh, if, if, if there's no compassion, it's not Jewish. And our Lord was Jew. So it's his body that shapes us. It's his way of thinking that shapes us. It's his spirit, the gift of himself and the Father, that shapes us. So when we come forward and receive the body and blood of Christ, to receive one is to receive the fullness of the divinity of Christ, then Christ is inside of us, as St. Paul said. It's more than just manna. It feeds our souls and our spirits for eternal life. And, and the one uh, incidental comment I would make is, you know, the Father gave them manna from in the desert kept them alive physically, was nourishing their bodies physically. But the Lord gives us his own body. We're looking at being nourished for eternal life. That's what we're becoming. So how does the body of Christ that we receive, precious body and blood, and even the word of God, form and shape us in our thinking, in our acting, doing, and even in our being? It's a hard concept to explain to the first communicants, and Monsignor Tank shared with me that uh, he's already had two groups of young people for first communion. A third one is coming. I think it's next week, or it may already have been, but then he has 170-some students for confirmation. So they're being formed and shaped into the sacrament they are receiving. But to go a little deeper, uh, it was said to me uh, in, in historical uh, conversation somehow, I remember it because of its meaning, uh, one of the Protestants was looking at uh, communion, uh, trying to understand it, uh, transubstantiation. How does the, the, the bread that looks like bread and the wine that looks like wine become the body and blood of Christ? How is this? And someone explained to him the, the spiritual sacramental change and understanding of what was going on on the altar. And, and his response was, if I really believed that that was the body and blood of Christ, I would crawl into this church on my knees. That's how serious he took what we were saying and claim and receive every time we come to Mass. But he went much deeper. If I believe that, the, imagine the humility 
of getting down on one's knees to crawl to the Lord? Is that the stance that we try to take when we reflect upon our Lord, the sacred presence, the real presence in the Eucharist? Do we, do, do we believe that it is the body and blood of Christ? We, we say we do, and I can't assume we don't. I just pose the question in a philosophical way. If we say we do, then it means something and how we're going to respond in the world. For us, it's the real presence, the real presence. So I would ask us today to continue to probe, to search for the truth that's protected and claimed by the church, that this is the Christ who is with us, who changes us, who died for us, who's offering us eternal life. And all we have to say is, I believe. So when we come forward to receive the body of Christ, we're saying something to the world and to the rest of the church, that we believe what we say we consume, that we believe what the church teaches, that we believe in the sacramental life of the church. We believe in mercy and forgiveness and love and going the extra mile. And we'll believe that until the Lord calls us into the kingdom. And some have been called to die for that belief before giving it up, and they never gave it up, so therefore these martyrs died for it. So that's what we're celebrating today. And we're one with the body of Christ and with our Lord as the head of the church. So we'll never be abandoned, despite how far we may fall, as long as we believe the Lord is with us and will bring us into eternity. That's why he died, that's why he rose, and that's why he gave us the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now collect our prayers and petitions for those who have 
ask for them and for those who have no one to pray for them. For the church, the body of Christ, that it may steadfastly proclaim the gospel with clarity and be a beacon of truth for a troubled and confused world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For our country, that we may have the courage to stand firm against the tide of secularism and actively defend religious liberty. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us, may we always approach the Eucharist worthily in full communion with the teachings and practices of the church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our faith community, that the nourishment we receive from the Eucharist energize us to reach out and assist those who are marginalized and all those who are in need, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died, our loved ones, and those who have gone before us in this parish, especially Rosemary Facella, Jean Cronikin, mother of Virginia Taylor, Betty Moran, sister of Sue Marty, Nazario Atinza, father of Maria Gillespie, Jim Gotardi, <laughs> brother of Joyce Glasner, Terry Green, husband of Dorothy and father of Regina Flynn, and Bridget Dugan, that God will welcome them into the heavenly kingdom with all the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those receiving their first Holy Communion and all the intentions we bring to this Mass, especially for the repose of the souls of Charles and Marcella McDowell, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we offer you these our prayers and those that remain in the silence of our hearts. We ask that you respond to our needs according to your holy will. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery and the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not with that you shall have from me. To the will you say that the Lord shall be healed.
amazing love that welcomes me the kindness of the Bought with blood, wholeheartedly, my soul undeserving. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come and let your glory come and let your glory fall. Our Father, who art in heaven, the rocks cry out your fame. Come and let your glory come and let your glory fall. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. God gave us new every morning, mercy is daily bread. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we pray. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us with your hand. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we pray. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name, on 